فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد ان شاء الله تعالى today we're going to be speaking about the last chapter باذن الله الكريم in our series of الغلو في الدين extremism in the religion the last chapter ان شاء الله تعالى is العلاج the cure for extremism and as you all know and can tell we weren't able to go through all the root causes of extremism because there are many factors and we weren't also able to go through all the madahir the manifestations of extremism and the same is when it comes to the cures of extremism we won't be able to go through every cure there is for extremism but what i will try to do inshallah ta'ala is mention the ru'us ru'us meaning the fundamental ones in which the majority of the cures will come back to so the first one inshallah ta'ala is at-tafaqquh fi dini having understanding of the religion and also having dabtul ilm precision in knowledge so having understanding of the religion is the first cure for extremism ولذلك عمر بن عبد العزيز said من عمل في غير علم كان ما يفسد اكثر مما يصلح the person who implements without knowledge who does without knowledge he corrupts more than that which he perfects he will come with more corruption than he would come with correcting things he intends to correct things through his actions but because he lacks knowledge and understanding of the religion he comes to corrupt the religion more and he comes to corrupt more than he corrects things so tafaqquhu fi din having understanding of the religion and when we say understanding of the religion we mean that you have knowledge of two things when we say having understanding of the religion it means that you have understanding of two things the first one is ulumul ala the instrumental knowledge ulumul ala is what the instrumental knowledge the instrumental knowledge means the knowledge is which are means they are means to other knowledges which are the objectives such as al lugha the arabic language the arabic language there are 12 sciences that fall under the arabic language but three are the main three are the uh, the main an uh, uh, grammar the second one being asarf morphology and the third one being balagha which is eloquency balagha is three types ilm al bayan ilm al badi and ilm al maani so the person studies those three sciences the, the those three sciences that fall under al lugha al arabiya the arabic language al nahw al sarf and al balagha under balagha comes three which is ilm al bayan ilm al badi and ilm al maani the second thing that the person also tries is usul al fiqh the second is usul al fiqh which falls under ulum al ala the instrumental knowledge that the person tries to have understanding of, of usul al fiqh because through usul al fiqh the person learns how to extract the rulings from the quran and the sunnah istimbatat al ahkam and if you do learn that you will learn what you will learn how to not fall into extremism in exaggeration and extremism in negligence usul al fiqh is a science that helps and gives the person the ability to go to the quran and sunnah and to be able to extract correct rulings from those two sources the kitab and the, and the sunnah 
Also, the person learns Mustalah al Hadith, the third science that he learns, the science of Hadith, the terminologies of the scholars. For example, when the scholars they say this Hadith is marfu', this Hadith is mawquf, this Hadith is maqtu', this Hadith is Hadith qudsi. What do they mean by these words? When they say this hadith is mursal, when they say this is hadith is mudallis, when they say uh, this is uh, munqati', when they say this hadith is mu'dal, when they say hadith is hasanun li dhati, when they say hasanun li ghayri, when they say uh, mubham, am a mudraj, an exception, what do they mean by these terms? When they say this hadith is hasanun bi mujma'u turuqiha, what do they mean by that? Without that, you won't know the missing factor, which is you won't know what is an evidence and what can be used as an evidence if you don't learn Mustalah al-Hadith. Because remember, to use an evidence, you would, know, you would need to have authenticity with you. And science, science of Hadith gives you the malaka, the ability to know what's authentic and what isn't authentic. You also learn ilal al-Hadith. Ilal al-Hadith is... Learning the defects in narrations. And that's a science that can stand alone. Because it's a science that deals with ghumud. It's very detailed. It's not something that the eye can see. It comes through time, experience. Takhrijul hadith. Knowing how to extract, how to do takhrij of hadith. Making sure that the science that you, mustal hadith is a nazari science. It's more theor- theoretical. Whereas takhrijul hadith is the Tatbiqi version of it, the implications, the applying of that science now. So Takhrij al-Hadith, you learn how to stand over the narration now and be able to apply and use the theories that you learned. The student of knowledge needs that in order to have a tafaquhu fi deen. All of this I'm talking about is ulum al You also need to study al-qira'at. The person gives importance to the qira'at and the Qur'an, the different dialects that the Qur'an has. Because the Qur'an, يفسر بعضه بعضه. it explains one, the other explains the other. And sometimes through the qira'at, it gives you a meaning of something else. You also give importance to usul tafsir which is the science related to tafsir, how to do tafsir of the Qur'an. What is turuq tafsir the path in which I need to take when it comes to a tafsir And also that you give importance to ulum al-Qur'an. The other ulum and the sciences pertaining to the Qur'an. That's all ulum al Also the person studies ulum al-maqasid. That's the second type now. The second type is ulum al-maqasid. Ulum al-maqasid is the knowledge which is objective. It's the objective knowledge now. And it is al-fiqh. The person learns fiqh which is furu' al-masail. Once you study usul al-fiqh, you learnt what? Al-adillah al-ijmaliyah. Now you're coming to what? Al-adillah al-tafsiliyah. The detailed furu' sub-branches. You learn how to pray properly. You, know, you learn how to... The end jihad that many people are claiming that what they are doing is jihad fi sabillah. It falls under al-fiqh. Learn fiqh. Study fiqh. It falls under here. Also, the person, he memorizes and learns hadith of the messenger, alayhi salatu wassalam, which is the second, al-hadith. The third one is al-aqidah. The person studies aqidah to ahli sunnah wal jama'ah. And the fourth, which is the last, is the person studies al-tafsir. And he looks at books of tafsir. Now, those are the two things that a person needs, al-tafaquhu fi dini, to understand the religion. Are you with me? But there's a manhaji, a methodology that the person needs to take in making sure that they understand the religion, in making sure that they are precise in this knowledge which they are gaining. There are four stages that the student of knowledge needs to take. And this, my beloved brothers and sisters, if the person does take this, Insha'Allah ta'ala he is coming with the first cure of getting rid of extremism in exaggeration and also extremism in negligence. The first stage, so we, we just spoke about ulum al and we spoke about al-ulum al-maqasid. But what stages do I need to take in order to learn it all? 
The first level is called marhala to ta'sis. It is called the level of grounding. You're grounding yourself. This stage, the person, he makes sure he builds the foundation, the foundation for himself. And how is that? By memorizing, by learning, the fundamental principles. He tries to do that. Memorizes that. He tries to study a small book. For example, this level, Marhala to Ta'sis, will fall under it. For example, if you take Lugal Arabiya Al Ajrumiya, Al Ajrumiya is Marhala to Ta'sis. You give yourself a foundation. If you're doing a sarf, La Mute Al Af'al will be Marhala to Ta'sis. If you're doing, for example, Balagha, Al Jawhar Al Maknoon is enough for it to be many of the levels to come. Because Al Balagha, it's best to just study one. Uh, one would you call a book on it? Usul al fiqh, for instance, you study, for example, Risalatul Latifa am al Waraqat by Abi Ma'ali al Juaini, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, am Risalatul Latifa written by Sheikh Abdul Rahman Nasir al Saudi. This is what Marhalatul Ta'sis. And you try to learn and memorize uh, the metan. For example, if you try to memorize the Kitab uh, Abi Ma'ali al Juaini al Waraqat, it's because it's a Nasr. And it's not in a poetic form, it may be hard for you to memorize. So you can memorize uh, the one, uh, the Nadm, did, the nadm did, done by Al uh, Imriti, Sharifuddin Al Imriti. Imriti, he made it into a poetry form, the student of knowledge, he memorizes it. So it sticks on his head. And he reads this book, um, he studies this from a Sheikh Mutqin, a person who knows the science very well, who's Mujid, who can perfect it, who knows it, and who also has. That this teacher that's teaching you has a good perception of this particular science. So when he passes it over to you, that you're going to take it from him in a good manner and a good film. So that's the first level, ta'sis. And walidarika brothers, if the foundation is not intact, then the person is not going to come out with good. Allah says in the Quran, وَالْبَلَدُ الطَّيِّبُ يَخْرُجُ نَبَاتُهُ بِإِذْنِي وَالَّذِي خَبُثَ لَا يَخْرُجُ إِلَّا نَكِدًا the thing that's evil, only the land that's evil only produces that which is evil. But the land that's good, وَالْبَلَدُ الطَّيِّبُ يَخْرُجُ نَبَاتُ بِإِذْنِ The land that's good, what does it produce? It produces nice crops. If the land, the earth is good, the crops that come out of it is good. But the land that's evil and corrupt and filthy, the crops that come out of it are poisonous and they are filthy. So the person has to make sure that the foundation is good. That the foundation is intact. The second one is marhala tu tadlili. It's called marhala tu at tadlili. Marhala tu tadlil was what? Are you with me? Is the second stage, which is that the person now learns evidences. Ah, oh, now he's learning the evidences, the proofs for the issues. Now, at the beginning he wasn't. He was just placing the foundations, the bricks. He was just learning that the things that nullify your prayer are, for example, five, six, seven. Huh? But this second stage, he now learns the evidences for each one. It's called Marhala to at tadlil This stage, what does he give tarkiz to? Ma'rifatul adilla in these masail, in these issues. And he tries to perceive it in the correct way, the evidence. The third, which is Marhala to al-ilm al muqaran The third stage is that the student, he now doesn't just have the evidences with him. Oh no. He doesn't just have the evidence. The third one is called Marhalatul Ilm al Muqarad. That the student, the third stage is that the student now is able to compare. It's called the comparing stage now. The student is now going to compare between the, the opinions that are out there. Okay? So, for example, when I said Marhalatul Ta'siz, what did I put in there? Al Ajrumiya, Talathatul Usul, and books like that. Al Waraqat, and the likes of it, right? Marhala to Tadlil, for example, will be Kitab al Tawheed, for example. Kitab al Tawheed gives you more evidences and it gives more importance to evidences. So the student of knowledge. For example, Marhala to Tadlil will be Qatul al Nada wa Ballu al Sada. Even that, though that can also be put in Ilm al Muqaran, part of it. That it gives you more ayatic eye of evidences for the opinions that the Nahnuhats take, the grammarians take. Marhala al-Muqaran means you're comparing now the madahib and the methodologies that are there. Are 
Are you there, brothers? al fiyat ibn Malik and the likes of them, they fall into here. In Aqidah, for example, what will fall into, fall into here is the Kitab al hamawiya and al tadmuriya by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah falls here. The, this now, what it does is that it gives you the madahib al mukhalifin those who oppose you, who are they and what do they believe? So you're learning and you're comparing the two opinions. Okay? The fourth and the last stage is that the fourth and last stage is marhala tu tahrir. Marhala tu tahrir. Marhala tu tahrir means that the student of knowledge he basically authenticates one opinion from the other, the other opinion. He basically responds to one group's opinion based on the other evidence that he has. He's not just now comparing. He's actually strengthening one opinion from another opinion. And this is tawassu'a. He's going into more details. <coughs> With those four stages and those sciences that I mentioned and some of those books which I mentioned, the student of knowledge will come with a tafakkuhu fi deen. And once he does that, my beloved brothers and sisters, he will get rid of extremism. Whether that extremism is extreme in exaggeration or that extreme is extreme in what? Negligence. But if a person hasn't taken that manhajiyyah, and all of them, my beloved brothers and sisters, is what? All of that is taken from who? Ala shaykhin mutqinin. You study it from a sheikh who is grounded, who knows that science, and he knows that field properly. As the poet said, So you memorize a matin which is rajih, and you take it to a mufid nasih. ما معنى مفيد ناصح? To a person who knows the field. Who is sincere in his teachings, who really want to, wants to benefit you and has no other dunya intent from you. So that's the first one, at tafaquhu fi deen, having understanding of the, the religion. The second, inshallah ta'ala, cure for extremism, whether that extremism is in exaggeration or that extremism is in negligence, is ittiba'ul haqq, following the truth. And what tajarrudi anil hawa and staying staying away from desires. Desires is what my beloved brothers and sisters, ma tamilu ilayhi nafs. It's what the nafs is inclined to. Mimma la yuhibbu shara that the legislation doesn't like. That Allah doesn't like. So what we learn is that desires is the contrary to what? The revelation. Allah mentions that in the Quran, what does He say? فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ أَوْ مُحَمَّدِ If they don't follow you, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ If they don't follow you, then what you need to know is that they are following their desires. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ If they don't follow you, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ Then what you need to know is that they are following their desires. So it's either revelation that you're taking or you're taking the, you're taking your desires. As Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah mentions. Also Allah says in the Quran, وَتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ الَّذِي آتَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا فَانْسَلَخَ مِنْهَا فَأَتْبَعْهُ الشَّيْطَانُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ وَلَوْ شِئْنَا لَرَفَعْنَاهُ بِهَا وَلَكِنَّهُ أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْكَلْبِ إِن تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْهِ يَلْهَثْ أَوْ تَتْرُكُ يَلْهَثْ Allah tells us in this verse that what did this man do? He was, by the way, he was a man who had knowledge, who gained the religion of Allah in understanding it and in comprehending it. But Allah tells us what? Allah tells us he took his desires. He followed his desires. Allah then tells us his example is what? The example of what? His example is of a dog. He's like a dog. The reason why he's like a dog is because Allah says in Tatruku Yalhat, the dog, if you give to him what he wants, or if you leave the dog, regardless of what the dog always has his tongue out, 
This individual, the revelation was given to him, the truth was given to him. When it was taken from him, he's still the same. A person who's what? Nature isn't good. So, revelation, are you there? Is in contrary to your desires. And that's why a lot of the times you would have hard time when you want to convince the people the truth. Because the truth is what fights against the desires and the desires of the people is hard for them to get rid of it. Allah tells us in the Quran, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي That the nafs is one that calls to evil. That's why prophets didn't get much followers. The reason why they didn't get much followers is because they're fighting against people's desires. Whereas the people who get the majority of the followers are the people who, who are the people who feed the people their desires and give the people the, what their desi desires wants. The desires, my beloved brothers and sisters, when it becomes too much in you, it takes you to what? For your heart to become tainted. And once your heart becomes tainted, you will not know what's good from what's bad. So you only fall into that which is extreme, either in negligence or extreme in exaggeration. لذلك عبد الله بن عون البصري رحمه الله said إذا غلب الهوى على القلب استحسن الرجل ما كان يستقبحه that when the desires fully occupies the person's heart the person starts to see good that which he once used to see evil when the desires fill up fill up your fill up your heart and you become filled up with your desires then you start to see good Things you once used to say, oh, that wasn't good, becomes normal to you now. And the reason why it's become normal to you is because غَلَبُ hawa, Desires has overcome you. Allah tells us in the Qur'an that through desires, extremism happens. Allah says in the Qur'an, فَأَمَّا مَنْ طَغَى, طغى. Look at this. As for the one who exceeds his limits, who transgresses, and a transgressive person is a person who is extreme. وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى And gave precedence to this world by following his desires, following this dunya. فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى The hellfire will be his abode. So here Allah tells us subhanahu wa ta'ala طَغَى He transgressed and the reason is because and then he goes وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا Transgression and extremism is connected to following your desires. Allah also says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Which is the ayah after. Allah says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ And the one who fears his Lord. وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى And he prohibits from his nafs following his desires. He fights against his nafs. And doesn't allow his nafs to follow his desires. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى The Jannah is going to be his abode. So the desires is what brings about extremism. Extremism in exaggeration and extremism in negligence. That's why Allah says, فَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا الْهَوَى أَنْ تَعْدِلُوا Don't follow your desires to be unjust. And justice means what? Fair, right? And fair means what? You're not extreme in... Exaggeration, nor are you extreme in what? Negligence. Fairness to, means to be in the middle, to be moderate. So when Allah is saying, فَلَا تَتَّبِعُ الْهَوَى Don't follow your desires. And then, أَن تَعْدِلُوا So you are not unjust. So you are not unjust. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ Do you not see the one who takes... He takes his desires as his Lord. Then Allah goes on to say, وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ And Allah Taala makes him misguided based on knowledge. وَخَتَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَ عَلَىٰ بَصَرِهِ غِشَاوَةِ فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Allah then says, Allah places a seal on his hearing and his heart. And also Allah Taala He places a veil on his on his eyes. Then Allah goes on to say, "فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ Who is the one who's going to guide him to the balanced path? مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ After Allah, 
Afala tadakkarun. Who's going to guide him? Guidance means what? Who's going to make him one who's in the middle? And the guidance is what's in the middle. We took that before. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى Where a nation who's in the middle. Our religion is a balanced religion. Guidance is balanced. So because this person has taken his desires as his ilah, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he placed a veil on his hearing and his heart. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala also placed a veil, so Allah placed a seal on his hearing and his heart. And Allah placed a veil in front of his eyes. Who is the one who's going to guide him after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala?